welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction, haunted entertainment, community industry, I almost said community, which would have worked too. Um, yeah. But whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And if you're in these United States, happy Labor Day, as this is going live on Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Hope you've had a good holiday weekend. Um, not a lot to say other than... We're weekend, our weekend's about to get a little extended, it looks like. Yeah. Here in New Orleans, we have Tropical Storm George, is it? What's the name of this little bastard? I forgot I forgot his name already. Does he have a name? I don't think he has a name yet. Um, Tropical Storm bearing down on us. Yeah, I think he does have a name. Oh, he has a name already? Um, you see how closely I've been following this. Work sent it out. Oh. I think it is George. I think we're on G. If so, that'd be an interesting coincidence. Gordon. Jordan. Uh, G- Gordon. Huh? Gordon. Gordon. Like, like Flash Gordon. Oh. Uh, ah. Yes. Okay, sorry. But I'll never do that again, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that look. Oh, <laughs> uh, Anyways, yes. Tropical Storm Gordon is bearing down on us, so it looks like we will be getting Tuesday and Wednesday off. Yeah. It was our evil plan all along to get a free five-day weekend. Yeah, due to a storm. Due to a yeah. storm. That no. We won't be able to do any work or enjoy anything. or yeah. Everything will be closed and life's going to suck. Yeah, no. But that reminds me. Um, pick up beer after podcast. <laughs> We're going to need it. But anyways... Definitely be sure to stay in touch with us. Make sure we survive the tropical storm. We'll, we'll be fine. <laughs> Make yeah. sure we survive. Our website is at hauntweekly.com. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook at hauntweekly. Tennyurl.com slash hauntweekly whisks you away to our YouTube channel, where all previous episodes are available for easy listening. We're also available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever finer podcasts are sold. And this is episode number 144. I checked the math. That is divisible by four. That means we're doing the, the news. news. And wow, uh, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's so much. It's not all in this episode. We could probably have two episodes of news this month. We're not, but we could. <laughs> yeah, um, so a few quick rules for the news. Um, one is if it's just a haunt that's supposed to be open opening. Yeah. Yeah, announcing their 2018 season. Yeah, I, I love you. Love you, Netherworld. Everyone was very impressed. The fact you managed to open up this year. I don't know why you'd announced you were doing it. Because they were moving. They were moving. Uh, and moving is a big deal, but still. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Netherworld. You're opening. That's awesome. But yeah, not, not a news item because we all kind of knew it was coming. Yeah. Um, and so on and so forth. Um, and when we get down to in just a minute, we're going to put as much of the sad news as we can in the front load yeah. so we can end happier. Or weirder, in the case might be, this time. Yeah, this is weirder. Weirder. But still, it's going to be a lighthearted news episode. God damn it. I'm going to do everything I can to make that happen. Mm-hmm. All right, but first thing is, first, it is conference reminders. It's an even episode, as it always is when we do the news. That means I start. And coming up next, September 14th through the 16th. In Lexington, Kentucky, it's Scarefest, the rebirth, as they keep emphasizing, at the Lexington Convention Center. Guests include Cassandra Peter's son, who apparently we said it wrong last week and got a deserving, uh, deserved lashing for, but we had it right both in the notes and on their website. I have no idea where that came from. Hmm. Uh, Joe Bob Briggs of Monster Vision fame and Sid Haig, a.k.a. Captain Spaulding, thescarefest.com for more information. Okay, then September 29th, it's Scary Dad's Haunted Halloween Show Part 2. It'll be in Houston, Texas at the Crown Plaza Hotel, Brook Hollow. Tons of vendors and limited vendor spots available. Hosted by Scary Dad Podcast, NightmareRetreat.com. Yep. Then, same day, actually, September 29th, it's Arizona Haunts... Arizona Haunts Haunted Swap Meet. Yes. Yes, you got it that time. Had to take a couple runs at it. In Phoenix, Arizona, at the northeast corner of Earl Drive and 15th Ave, hosted by the Arizona Haunters Forum at azhaunters.com. When you go there, check their calendar section. That is where the details will reside. Okay, November 9th and 10th. 
So after season, yay! Dark history and horror con in Champaign, Illinois, at the Garden Hotel Urbana. Tickets are just twenty dollars for the weekend and ten dollar or ten dollars for a day. It includes a film festival, dhhcon.com. All right, same days. A lot of that going around. <laughs> In Salt Lake City, Utah, it's the Legendary Haunt Tour at the Holiday Inn Express. Don't worry, the conference isn't at the Holiday Inn Express. That's just where you meet. Yep. You're going on a bus because it's a haunt tour, and you will be touring the Nightmare on 13th, Fear Factory, and other haunts TBA. You'll find when they're announced at Legendary Haunt Tour to teasethere.com. Okay, January 25th through the 27th, it is HauntCon Halloween and Party Expo right here in New Orleans at the Ernest and Memorial Convention Center, also featuring us. Yes, we say that. Every time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we say that every time. Yeah. We don't know what capacity, but we're going to do something. Let us get through season first, please. <laughs> yes. If you have ideas, though, Drop them in the comments. Yeah. Tag, yeah, tag us. Make a comment on Facebook or Twitter. Or let us know. Yeah. HauntCon.com for more info. All right. And then finally for this week, February 23rd and the 24th, it's Haunt X, the Haunters DIY Expo in Pomona, California at the Fairplex. Details are sparse right now, but HauntX.com. Just love that website so much. <laughs> we'll give you all more information. Thank you, Brian Foreman, for letting us know. All right. Um, that's it for the conference reminders right now. That means we're skipping ahead to the news, and for us, that's quite literal. We have to get through all the conferences we're not talking about this week to yeah. get to the actual news. Okay. First things first, we have a few updates last week. Last week, we did the New Orleans area haunt preview. Right. Uh, we got an email from Dwayne Sandburn at 13th Gate. Yes. Um, he let us know about a few things that are taking place um, that we did not know about and wanted to give us the heads up on. Um, one is Haunted House VIP. Apparently, Mortuary, 13th Gate, and Rise are teaming up in Plus Scout Island. Um, yeah. Are, are teaming up. But Plus Scout Island's owned by Mortuary. It feels weird to repeat. Yeah. Saying, and the team up. Uh, but yes. They are teaming up to basically do like a VIP upgrade, I guess you would say, um, reciprocity agreement. Yeah. The, the details are a bit unclear, but they're doing a VIP club where basically you can get free VIP upgrades at the three main haunts, and you can even get one free general mission to Scout Island. So that will be cool. Um, he also let me know about the opening of Ranch of Horror, a North Shore haunt um, that is going to be... The company seems to be based out of California. The website's really, really weird, but they're opening up new locations in Missouri and here in, in southeast Louisiana. Uh, we'll feature a Zombies on the Bayou haunt. It looks like a trail... I also have a zombie escape, which looks really interesting, mm -hmm. and a, and I can't believe I'm about to say these words out loud, stabbing cabin attraction. Yeah. <laughs> Look, guys, if you're listening to this by some long shot, um, uh -huh. I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in 1980. My formative years were probably the mid-80s to mid-90s yeah. in that range. <laughs> stabbing cabin has a very different meaning. <laughs> To someone of a certain age. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We're going to rethink about that. Still, we'll look like we'll be hitting that up on the same run we do Rise. Yeah. Um, cause it's literally, we can make it on the way, basically. If you take Causeway, you could be on the way. Um, also, an uh, update on New Orleans Nightmare. We expressed our concerns about they were not doing enough to separate themselves from House of Shock. Right. We landed on the um, New Orleans Nightmare Facebook page, which is their primary promotion tool right now. They still have the House of Shock logo and header. Yeah. We just realized that. Not helping, dudes. No. Not, not helping. Not at all. Uh, not helping. Anyways, real news. Well, let's do some real news. What do you say? We're only 10 minutes into this thing. That it's, sounds like a good thing. Uh, let's, let's get some real news out there. Especially since we have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Especially since we have a lot, yes. Um, like I said, we're going to start with some sad news. And then, we'll, like I said, we're not doing an order of just flat importance this week. We're kind of grouping like stories together. So anyways, the first story this week, Fright Dome will not be opening for the 2018 Halloween season. Right. This is sucky. <laughs> yeah. Really, really sucky. The article we're pointing to is uh, by Caitlin Lilly at the Las Vegas Review Journal. But Egan Productions, the company behind it, has announced they will not be returning to Circus Circus for the 2018 season. Circus Circus has decided not to move forward with Fright Dome. 
Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it was an attraction that operated out of circus circuses. And by the way, I cannot type the word circus no matter how hard I try. <laughs> I have it like 16 times in this section. Yeah. <laughs> And every single time I typed it, I managed to misspell it a unique and special way. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. I don't know how. I mean, it's like I know how to spell it. It's just I can't type it. <laughs> but anyways, it opened in the Adventure the Circus Circus's Adventure Dome. First opening in 2003 with a quarter of a million square feet of a haunted theme park. Um, but sadly, it is no more. This was probably... I think this was Las Vegas's best known haunt. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm not sure. It's the one I first heard about, though. Yeah. It's definitely been there a long time, right? But yeah, it's really sad to see this not opening and to get the news so close to season, right? Yeah, and it sounds like it was a sudden decision and notice given from the way the article's written. Yeah, the article makes it sound like they they did not. Egan Productions just learned about right. it. Right. Exactly. Which is absolutely bananas to me. hmm But yeah, they are not moving forward with it. I don't know, man. I used to hear all the time, in fact, I think we did a story um, a while back, or at least read one, where they were talking about the huge lines outside this attraction, how people were waiting for hours to get in, yeah. and how crazy busy it was. And it was just really, really sad. It had such a good reputation. Uh, just frustrating. Um, so yeah, I, I, Las Vegas is losing one of its one of its pillars, pillar haunts, and that's just that's that's sucky. Yeah, it is. But you know, Las Vegas, I'll tell you this: after this season, we'll tell you more about what it's like to lose a pillar haunt. <laughs> we'll have a better idea, well, because this will be our first season without House of Shock. So yeah, it'll be interesting. All right, after that. An article by John Farrick at Patch.com. Some really bad news for the haunted house at Old Joliet Prison. Joliet, Joliet Prison. I keep saying it wrong. Uh, we actually covered this in episode 116, another news episode. Right. People were excited about the opening. Yeah. People were very excited. Basically, Evil Intentions um, was planning to open a second haunt this year. Now, their main haunt will still be going on as, as designed and promised, but they had they, they secured a lease with the old Joliet prison nearby, and this is all in the Chicago area. Right. For the record. Um, to open up a haunted attraction in the historic building. And it sounded like it was going to be just awesome. Yeah. Um, but yes, they had expected to open September 1st. They've missed the deadline. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it does not appear like it's going to be happening this year. And news gets worse because the lease they had with the city was just a one year lease. Right. So if it doesn't happen this year, there's no guarantee it will ever happen. Yeah. And it looks like the deal that they got to lease the property was kind of crap, um, to be honest with you, because the city was making them pay to do the upgrades like the HVAC, the fire codes, all that stuff, and that's not going to be cheap. Yeah, especially not in a historical building. Yeah. And do all that for a one-year lease? <sighs> That's kind of crap. So they're going to try to negotiate a longer-term lease is what what people are hypothesizing will happen. The website still has the same message about opening the, the opening of the prison that they put it up in January, which is coincidentally when we did episode 116 and first covered it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it does not appear like it's going to be happening. Now, it will not impact planned bus tours that we're supposed to, they're going to start at that attraction soon. So other things that were taking place at the prison will still move forward, but it does not appear the haunted house will. And you now we talked about this previously, the dangers of operating or attempting to set up a haunt in a historic building. Right. It, it really is a huge crapshoot because you have so much to deal with in terms of like the historic societies and the rules of what you can and cannot do. I know the mortuary here has to contend with it, for example. Right, and upgrading <laughs> old buildings to fire code. Um, it's also yeah. very expensive. Yeah, fire code, ADA, and all that stuff yeah. gets ridiculously expensive because not only do you have to pay to do the upgrades, but you have to pay to do the upgrades within the boundaries of you know, the, the historic preservation rules. Right. And that just gets really, really messy in a hurry. And then a lot of times with these buildings, you're going to get some very unpleasant surprises. It's just how bad the damage is, which yeah. it sounds a little bit like what well, that might have been happened here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because sometimes it can be a lot worse than you think. It, 
And it's, it's Yeah, we reported on um, a haunt that wasn't going to be opening this year for that exact reason, yeah. whenever we talked about it previously. Yeah, yeah, yeah they um, supposedly were going to open this year, but they came in and they started really doing the surveying of it mm-hmm. and discovered there was like holes in the floor, which I don't know how you missed that on the first pass. Well, and that part, parts of the building had collapsed on them. Right, yeah, the the bones of the building were... Not very good in the end. Yeah, the structure. It was not structurally sound was the problem. So, yeah, and that sounds like that may have been part of the problem here. Yeah, uh, but yeah this is just, it's, it's sad, it's frustrating. And I got to, my, 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 my heart goes out to evil intentions. They really did appear to make a good effort here. Hopefully, they're able to pull it off next season. Yeah. Hopefully, the pieces fall into place. Speaking of haunts that won't be happening this year, this one has me a little confused. I've got to be honest. I've read mm-hmm. this article a few times. I'm still confused. It's an article by Smitty at WPDH. It's, but a, a Tuxedo Park, New York, oh, now we're in the New York area, called Forest of Fear will not open this year. And, okay, Haunt's not opening is not necessarily by itself news, but the reason is so bizarre. I couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't ignore it. They said they had consistently rainy weather and for the safety of their guests, they are not opening this year. They are an outdoor trail haunt. Um, and apparently, even if it's like dry from here until you know opening day, it will not be safe. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know much about the topography of that area. Are they dealing with landslides? Are they did I, it just wreck the trails that bad? Were they not able to work on it at all? Yeah. It might be a knockdown thing. They couldn't get everything back in place. and Yeah. Um, I don't know. It is it is weird. They let their fans know through a Facebook posting. Yeah. Um, Which they actually did something very clever on their Facebook. They did the post, and then they posted, like, the header image. Yeah. They changed it to the announcement. Yeah. So when you go to their Facebook right now, like, the very first thing you see is the announcement of them not opening, which is, that is smart, guys. That's a lesson to learn there. If you can't open a season, right? that's how you do it. Yes. And maybe if you change your haunt name, you should do that, too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Or chain them, take over. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Anyway. Um, yeah. Also good for moves, though, and things like that. Yeah, but one of their um, fans posted maybe they should just do a haunted renaissance fair in the space. And um, so they might consider doing something else, but it's not going to be the traditional haunt. Yeah, apparently it's not safe. And, you know, kudos to them for thinking of safety first. Yeah. Um, I do apl- that, that definitely is worth a I'm a little confused, but like I said, I don't know the topography of the area at all. I, I'm, I've never been to that part of New York. In fact, I've never been to New York. No. <laughs> no. So I have no idea what we're dealing with. But it's just a very bizarre reason for a um, haunt to close. It is. All right. Well, let's move on to some happier news. What do you say? I think that's a great idea. All right. This is an article on Icon vs. Icon. Six Flags is teaming up with CBS Films to produce a series of haunts based upon an upcoming film. Yes. Now, we talk all the time about, like, Halloween Horror Nights and so forth. They always do film... They always do um, ha- specialized haunts centered around established properties. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, we talk about the Stranger Things haunt this year. Yeah. Things that already exist and people are already familiar with. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which makes a lot of sense. They get people pumped about your haunts. Well, Six Flags is doing it a little different. <laughs> Kind of reverse. It's kind of reverse. They're doing the haunts, which in many cases will open before the film. Yeah. Um, the film will be running almost, uh, I guess, at the same time as the haunts are open, because the film's going to be released September 28th. Yeah. So if there were one close enough, which there isn't, no. but no! would you prefer to go to the haunt first or go to the, the, film, first. the film first? That is a damn good question. Yeah. Um, my gut says, I think I'd like to go to the haunt first. Yeah. Because, and and the reason is just because I think I, I, I prefer the haunt experience to the movie experience in general, but it'd be kind of cool to go back and watch the movie and say, oh, I recognize that. Oh yeah, we yeah. were there. It's cause, and then and the reason I say that's cause we live in New Orleans and one of the fun things about living in New Orleans is constantly seeing crap from your town in movies. Yes, yeah, sometimes your work. <laughs> sometimes you, even. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. We were there watching um, Happy Death Day recently, trying to spot Crystal carrying crap in the background. Yeah. <laughs> because she apparently was... And 
an un uh, an uncast extra <laughs> in that film. Yes, I did not find me. I did but... not. Well, they, they did the, uh, the the close focus, so everything in the background yeah. was super blurred. You you probably were there. You were probably pixel number eighty nine on yeah whatever, something like that on one of the shots, but. But yeah, so I'm so used to seeing that. Like, remember the time like we found the uh, the quick stop we used to go to sometimes for Po Boys on mm-hmm. uh, Scream Queens. Yeah, yeah. And like, holy crap! I didn't know that was in New Orleans. Yeah, well, it was like, well, not only that, but that Po Boy shop is way far away from anything like that, civilization. Yeah, you wouldn't think that, that, that uh, films would go out there. Yeah, it's way out of the way. It's off Barataria, right? Way yeah. in the West Bank, and it is the most Run down, yeah. Um, looking, po- looking a little quick stop, but they have some great po boys in there. Yeah, great food. But geez, I was like, yeah, I was like, he was like, but I didn't, I didn't know like movie crews had discovered that area. Yeah, <laughs> I thought the only thing they knew about the West Bank was the point, but yeah. that's neither here nor there. But no, I'm so used to that experience, and it's such a fun experience. I think that would recreate it doing it that. That makes sense. It's it's the whole: do you read the book or watch the movie first? And and it's people's preference. Yeah, exactly. So I I would do it that way. But yeah, but basically what they're doing is for Fright Fest this year. <laughs> we actually have news here, not just yes. reminiscing about New Orleans uh, movies, shot, films shot in New Orleans. Um, they are at several other um, uh, several other parks. It's going to be the. I'm um, just going to read them off here. It's Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California, Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey, and Six Flags Great America in Gummy, Illinois. Gummy? How the hell do you say that? I'm going to go with Gummy. I'm going to go with Gummy. Gummy sounds right. But basically what they're doing is they're creating a series of haunts, the mausoleum, the mask room, the doll room, and the torture chamber, which are all based upon scenes in the movie Fright Fest, mm-hmm. which I guess what we said is being released September 28th, and Fright Fest deals with an actual serial killer stalking a haunted theme park, basically. Yeah. So, that's interesting. So, they're making a theme park to do a movie about a theme park serial killer. Yes. Okay. You just about got it, I think. <laughs> yeah, it, it's bizarre, but it's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and those will open at the time. That I, I don't have the opening date for uh, Six Flags Fright Fest. But they'll be opening with that. So, yeah, it's an interesting team-up. And it's a weird Mm cross-promotion. Because, obviously, CBS Films is going to be doing a huge um, promo campaign. At least I hope they're going to do a huge promo campaign for the film. It looks like a rather expensive horror movie they shot. Yeah, it seems like they're, you know, adding (laughs) all of these haunts in order to promote it, I think that that's the start but of the big thing. But yeah, it's a it's a potential cross promotion because CBS will promote the film, and you know, Six Flags will be promoting the haunts, and they'll both support each other. Yeah. So I think that's a really cool idea. It is. I'm surprised we haven't seen more like this, honestly. Yeah. And Six Flags is the perfect entity to do it because they have the nationwide presence. Right. Just not here in New Orleans. Yeah. That's its own horror set already. <laughs> yeah, the the Six Flags New Orleans actually is a horror set. <laughs> yes. <sighs> Why is everything terrible? <laughs> <clears throat> but anyways, no, I think it's a great idea. I'm really excited about this, and I'm going to be looking forward to hearing what people have to say about these haunts. Because if these haunts suck, then everything goes sideways in a hurry. Yeah, hopefully that won't happen. I, I doubt it. Fright Fest is known for being pretty good and doing good work, so I think it'll be... I think, we're gonna, I think the kids will be all right. <laughs> all right, speaking of uh, haunted attraction announcements, uh, Knott's Scary Farm has announced all of its haunts. <laughs> and they will be featuring 14 separate attractions this year from September 20th to October 31st. Um, new haunts will include the Depths, Dark Entities. The Depths is uh, looks like a cave-slash-mining one. Dark Entities is a sci-fi one, and Forsaken Lake, which is a scare, new scare zone uh, centered around, well, a, a, a lake. <laughs> I know, big surprise, huh? Yeah. Old favorites will return, including Dark Ride, Trick or Treat, Shadowlands, Pumpkin Eater, The Spec Ops, Special Ops Infected Zombie Laser Tag, Paranormal Inc., The Red Barn, and The Hanging. And also some several, blah, 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 blah. several scare zones will make the return, including Ghost Town, Ghost Town Streets, Carnival and the Hollow. So, if you're heading to the Not Scary Farm, you've got a lot to see and do. Mm-hmm. Get on it. <sighs> that that sounds like a lot of fun. 
Yeah. All right. Moving on to Google. This is a bizarre one. It is. This is one that I read several times because I'm not sure exactly what they're trying to do here. <laughs> yeah, this, well, it's it, it's over. So if we have any listeners in Tokyo, I'm sorry you missed it. But if you went, tell us what it, what yeah. it was like because I'm really curious. Explain some of this crap to us because we're we're we're, we're going off this article on Sora News Twenty Four. And unfortunately, they're not very good at explaining it, or maybe it's just something that can't be easily explained. Right. I don't know. We're not fully understanding it. Anyways, here's the thing. Google ran a haunted house in Tokyo, a free haunted house in Tokyo, for one week to promote its Google Assistant app. Basically, if you were in Tokyo and, you know, you spoke Japanese or could at least fake it well enough, yeah, you would say... To open up the Google Assistant and say, T- take me to a haunted house. Obviously, you'd say in Japanese. Um, yeah. And then Google connects you with a ghost. The Google Assistant, like, naps off. Yeah. And you get re- it gets replaced with a ghost who then guides you through the process of obtaining a free ticket and then leads you to the haunted house. Yeah. What happens inside the haunted house? It doesn't say. Oh. The article does not say. I was wondering if maybe the Google ghost would, <laughs> um, like, activate the scares and stuff as you're going through. Oh, that'd be wild. Yeah. Like, it says something and then something happens around you. That'd be cool. <laughs> now, the haunt ran from August 25th through September 2nd, so it ended in just before this podcast went live, basically. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I thought this was an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um... Because everyone pretty much has one of these virtual personal assistants in their pocket right now, whether it's Google, uh, Siri, Alexa, yeah, whatever. Everybody's got something like that. Mm-hmm. And this is going to become a marketing tool to take note of in the not-too-distant future. Yeah. And I think the reason for that is because right now, I don't think people have yet developed the level of comfort mm-hmm. when talking to their phones like that. Yeah. Like, basically, if you look through my entire history of me, okay, hey, Siri, you know, Mm -hmm. not you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I have to be careful when you say the S word in this house. (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah. Um, It's like, hey, set a reminder for blah, 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 or set a timer for blah, blah, blah. And then that's pretty much all I do. Right. These one-off interactions. But, yeah, I think we're going to see more and more of these complex things. And I think you could do some really cool things with, like, Alexa integrations and whatnot they get people to come to your haunt. Mm-hmm. Could be a lot of fun. It could. So, yeah, I'll be curious to see if anyone knows what it was like on the inside. Because Japan, as we discovered from our friend Kyle, actually has a really awesome haunted house culture. Yeah. Like, like you wouldn't think it, but it's really, really great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's an especially popular thing for dates, apparently. Yeah. Which is why they kept looking at him weird when he wanted to go alone. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, just me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, it's a very cool idea, and I think we're going to have to keep an eye on this. I don't think it's something Haunt should be worried about just yet, but... No. But, yeah, if you got someone that's good at setting up these type of interactions, maybe now's a good time to start thinking about how to do it, what you can do with it. Yeah. Or, <coughs> if you know somebody at Google and want to try to attempt this at your haunt for free tickets to pair up with Google. Yeah, maybe it's you something know, you could collaborate, maybe, yeah. Maybe it's something you could contact them or other tech companies. So. Yeah. All right, moving right along because we still have a lot of stories. Mm. Holy crap, so many stories. Uh, the Terror Vault. This one was interesting. The Terror Vault is a new haunt opening up in San Francisco, specifically at the San Francisco Mint, going back to that whole historic yeah. building thing we were just talking right. about. But they were at, they managed to successfully open. It is a new, quote-unquote, interactive haunt. Mm-hmm. Um, features a 45-minute guided tour of the haunt and the Mint itself, with many, and they just say the words, interactions yeah. with the occupants. Um and like everything in San Francisco, it's expensive as hell. It's sixty dollars per ticket, mm-hmm. um, and they are available on every half hour. You have to book a time to go. Now, the part that made it interesting to me was you have a neon glow necklace that you wear to opt out yeah. of our scares. Now, let's roll it back to what Eastern State Pen does, mm-hmm. where if you want the harder scares, you wear the glow necklace. Yeah. Because well, you're here, easy to see. 
well, A, you're easier to see, and B, it's active consent. Yeah. At any point, I can just reach up and take the necklace off if, if shit goes sideways. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just I can take it off. Here, what happens if I put the necklace on and it falls off? Yeah. What happens if I lose it? You know what I mean? Yeah. I can suddenly find myself targeted by scares I didn't consent to simply because the necklace didn't stay on for whatever reason. Right. That, it, 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 the default should always be no to the touching, especially. Anything, any right. touch haunts. Um, the default should always be no unless there is active consent involved. Yeah. Um, and that's, and that's a problem with this. This is not active consent. Um, and also, like you said, putting the necklaces on makes it easier to spot those people and target them. If you're in a, if there's a group of 10 and only two have glow necklaces on, um, you know to target them. But if you're in a haunt with them, but if you do it the reverse way and you've got eight people with glow necklaces and two people without, yeah, it's harder to see them. It's harder to target them. It's harder to do whatever it is you're going to do. Yeah, I agree. So I, I don't understand why they did it that direction. Mm -hmm. I, I think that was an, a very, very unwise move, and I think it's going to cause problems for them if they're not very, very careful. Yeah. But yeah. No, it, was, it seems like an interesting idea you know, to open up this type of haunt in, in a historic building. Yeah, it, it is. All right, moving right along. We had previously talked about the closing of Dr. Slaughter's um haunted house in um shoot where, where was it idaho falls idaho <laughs> <laughs> I'm like what state is idaho falls <laughs> jonathan wake up jonathan it's early in the morning but you got to pull it together man you got to pull it together it's early all right but anyways dr slaughter's has closed but a new haunt will be opening up in its location new owner brent wilson will be opening up planet doom and here they're doing a very good job of taking over a location, but making it their own. Yeah. They are promoting it as Planet Doom. They are talking about how it is going to be stylistically very different, mm -hmm. but still very scary. And they are also continuing some of the traditions of the previous haunt, including supporting the local D.A.R.E. program. Right. Um, now, we kind of knew this was coming. This is the first formal announcement. Mm -hmm. But we mentioned in episode 140 that the fire department was training in the haunt. Right. Yeah. Well, now we've got the formal announcement. We now know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's good that there's going to be supporting the same program. Maybe that'll help the uh, community there accept the new haunt just like they did the old one. Yeah, and it seems like they they are. According to the interviews in the article, mm -hmm. one guy said, you know, he's because Dr. Slaughter has been, been around for like 13 years. Yeah, it's been around a while. Been around for a while. And he said, yeah, it was our tradition to always go to Dr. Slaughter's, but we're looking forward to beginning a new tradition um, with Planet Doom. Yeah. Which I've got to say, the name is also really cool, too. Yeah. Because Dr. Slaughter is pretty badass. Mm -hmm. But and but Planet Doom, it, like, continues the tone. Yeah. But it's still you completely unique and different. Right. It, and it could be anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it could be anything from sci-fi to apocalyptic to... Yeah. Just straight up horror. I mean, it exactly. could be literally anything you want it to be, and that that really gives you a wide range of options. I yeah. like that. Good um, name choice. A good name choice. <laughs> and like I said, it continues. It continues the the style of Doctor Slaughter while making something unique. I like it overall. Yeah. I think it was a really good idea. Um, like I said, smart move, continuing support for the Dare program. But yeah, good job making it your own, and that's what you're going to have to do. Yeah. And. Well, in other news that we can update people on, mm -hmm. the State Fair's Haunted Castle Dark Ride is finally open in Minnesota. Yeah. They had some hiccups. They had some kerfuffles. Mm -hmm. the, the shipping apparently was a little late. Um, then they had to get it set up. But they uh, probably put in some significant OT <laughs> yeah. getting this set up. And it only missed three days of the fair. And it is running now one of the first new dark rides made in a long, long time. Yeah. That is, oh, it brings a tear to my eye. Yeah. It makes me so happy. Um, No word on, you know, what, no word on, like, reviews or anything yet, because mm -hmm. just the announcement of it being open. We discussed it previously on 140, going back to our last news episode, talking about how they were making a new dark ride specifically for the Minnesota State Fair, and right. this was, I think it was the first one that had been made in, like, seven years or more. 
And we've talked in previous episodes how a lot of the old ones are just closing down and going away, and many of them don't exist. The whole genre of attraction is disappearing across the world. Yeah. So this is a little bit of a, re- a little revitalization in Minnesota. Yeah. It makes me silly, silly happy to hear that. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> Next up, we got about ten more minutes here, I think. I was trying to find oh. out if um, if Kyle actually was, said anything about the dark ride, because he was at Minnesota State Fair this year. Oh. At the beginning of August. Um, well, at the end of August. but That might be uh, problematic, because the, the ride might not have been there. Yeah, exactly. I was trying to find out if, if he was there in time, if they, if they had gotten it up in time, but it doesn't look like he commented on it, so I, I doubt he did. Yeah, I'd forgotten he was at the Minnesota State Fair. We're talking about Kyle a lot this episode. We need to message him. Yeah. Uh, See how he's doing. Yeah, I haven't seen him in over a month, so. All right. Oh. Well, this one is interesting. Okay, apparently there was a an auction held of Disneyland mm-hmm. uh, memorabilia. Um, it was held in Arizona at the uh, Von Eaton Galleries. And the proceeds to it went to the Coffin Cyst Syndrome Foundation and the Chime Institute. The Chime Institute works with um, kids with learning disabilities. Right. But basically, they sold a whole bunch of stuff from Disneyland history. Yeah. And several items might have been of interest to us haunty types. Yeah, and I think this is actually... Well, that was probably Disney World that we that was last year that they... Or the year before, they sold a bunch of things like this. Yeah. But it there. seems to be something to watch out for. Yeah. Um, but the first thing was they actually sold one of the Doom buggies from the Haunted Mansion. The yeah. little ca- the cars you ride in. And that went for 220000 Damn near a quarter million. Yeah. Just wow. Um, then one of the original Haunted Mansion stretching portraits, which if you've never been in the haunted attraction, a shame on you. Um, <laughs> uh, and but second, basically, it's a room. When you're in the initial room, I can't remember how they pull it off, but the room begins to stretch very visibly, mm-hmm. and I, I think they do it by moving the ceiling up at an imperceptibly slow rate. Mm-hmm. So while you're standing in this room, the ceiling is moving, and like the, the portraits and everything stretch up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a very trippy effect. Like the first first time I saw it as a teenager, it was really mind boggling. I kept trying to figure out how they were doing it. Mm-hmm. But one of the original stretching portraits went for four hundred and two thousand dollars. Yeah. Just holy hell. <laughs> yeah. But if you're looking for something more affordable, <laughs> and by that I mean not significantly more affordable at all. They actually had one of the original attraction posters, like they'd put up around the park to advertise it. Haunted Mansion attraction posters, that went for 23000 yeah. You know. Yeah, that's change compared to the other. That's chump change. Man, I can yeah. throw that. No, I can't. No. No, I, yeah, no, I just could not believe these prices when I saw it. The, the, the auction ended up raising over $8.3 million for the foundations. And here's the thing that's crazy. That stretching portrait was not even the most expensive item there. Hmm. The uh, Skyway ride bucket, from the old Skyway ride they had, I don't know if the ride's there or not anymore. I don't know about Disneyland. Mm-hmm. It fetched $621,000. Wow. That is absolutely insane. You know, great charities, though, um, and I hope whoever spent $402,000 on one of the original stretching portraits really, really, really enjoys it. Yeah. Well, you know that it's going to be durable because it's stretched over so many years. <laughs> it's pre-stretched for you. No. Well, actually, the, the portraits themselves don't stretch. Yeah. It's one of the weird things about it. It's, it's kind of hard. It, it, they, they, they look like they do. They give the illusion, but they don't. Right. I think they are actually static, and I think the frame moves around them. But, yeah, it's so... Wow. I have to go back and look how that was done, because I, I learned it once when I first went as a teenager, and then apparently I forgot. Because mm-hmm. uh, it really blew my mind when I first saw it. that uh, That effect was so good and so amazing. And like like a lot of the effects in the Haunted Mansion, it, it's just how the hell they do that. That one, and I'll always remember... 
because it's a two person. The, the buggy's a two person, two seater. Mm -hmm. There's one part where you go around a corner and you're facing a mirror at the end of the hallway, and in the mirror you see a ghost sitting perfectly between you two. Hmm. Like taunting and moving around, and it's done. Um, it, it was done through a projection, basically, but it's it's awesome. It's a really cool effect, and they, they time I, the timing they have to do to execute that is incredible. Right. I mean, it's amazing. So yeah, it's, the haunted mansion. If you've never been, you gotta go. It's awesome. There you go. Okay. Moving on to our final story this week, because like I said, we're ending weird. <clears throat> Haunted house advertisement mistaken as real threat. Yeah. Yeah, you found this one, and wow. This um, happened in Gainesville, Florida, and it deals with um, the uh, the haunt, the Torment Factory. I had to look up the haunt, I had to find the haunt name. The Torment Factory. What they did is they sent out an advertisement in the mail to homes and businesses in the area that part is good, mm. that simulated a, rams a ransom note. It had the magazine cutout letters, it had fake blood on it, and it was meant to be the first in a series of such ads to go to kind of tell a little narrative, Right. Um, I guess, as they moved along. Well, the first one went out, and the police were involved. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> they looked a little too good. Hey, kudos to your graphic designer. <laughs> yeah. Kudos. Uh, that, that's impressive. Yeah. You managed to freak out at least the not insignificant portion of a town. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, especially in like in the... T uh, they highlight the tourism office here, that, but apparently a lot of people believe that it was a real threat of some stripe. Yeah. And they contacted the police... Um, but yeah, the, according to people, it gave the impression of a real stalker. They thought they were actually being stalked. Right. And they don't actually show the ad up close. They show it at a distance. They, I can't read what it says. Yeah. Um, but apparently it gave a lot of people the impression that there was a real stalker and a real threat involved. Um, yeah, and like I said, it was originally planned to be the first of three, but they are kind of putting the other two on hold. Pending either a redesign or a rewrite or whatever. Um, the police did say that no crime was committed. No one's being arrested. No one's being charged with anything. Mm -hmm. But they um, did highly, highly, highly encourage the haunt, and I guess others that might attempt this, to uh, put this as an advertisement stamp yeah. somewhere on the letter. Yeah. <laughs> which they did not do. Which, uh, you know, we talked... It seemed like every year, right around this time... There's a story of some stripe of a haunt going too far with its advertising. advertising. Last year, we had the woman being tortured on the billboard. Right. Um, so, yeah. And then, well, we've had that one. We've had, there was another one, too. I'm trying to remember what it was. Yeah. But we've had these stories of haunts getting in trouble or going too far with their advertisement. You have to remember, and we said this then, too, that your, your haunt, when you have active consent... To scare people and to, you know, touch on these issues and do things, you can do a lot more than you can in your ads where you do not have that active consent from people. Right. When That's for the general public. Mm -hmm. That's for everyone from people who absolutely despise haunted houses and despise that they even exist yeah. to your hardest core fans. Right. Um, you got to remember that. And I don't know, if, it, if, if your ad can be misconstrued in some way like that, yeah, you... you you can put yourself up for a little bit of trouble. Now, that being said, like I said, they're not getting any trouble. If anything, they're getting a little free publicity from this. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. And this doesn't appear like with the billboard to be really sparking a community backlash. No. It just seems to be more... This seems to be as, as far as it's gotten, basically. A, oh, ha, ha, silly people. <laughs> they still yeah. get for a real ransom letter. Oh, it's silly. And that seems to be as far as it's getting, which is probably about the perfect place to take it, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you, you've got to be mindful. Imagine if this had gone any further, if someone had done something, you know, irrational or stupid, and people had possibly gotten hurt based upon this ad. Unlikely, yeah, but still, what if, you know? They, they would have been catastrophic. Yeah. So, yeah. 
But yeah, no, it, <clears throat> be very careful with your ads. And if you're doing something like this, I agree with the Gainesville police. Make it abundantly clear it's an ad. Yeah. Put the damn stamp at the bottom saying this is an ad. Like, you see it all the time in magazines whenever they publish uh, things that look like news content. This is an advertisement for blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Put that at the bottom. Just just do it. It's better to be safe than sorry. If it's not obviously an ad, do that. <laughs> make, it, make, make it obvious that it's an ad. Oh, God. So, yeah, good. I guess good job on the publicity, guys. And I guess kudos to your graphic designer. It looks really good. It does. <laughs> it looks really, really good. I'm very, very impressed by the work they did. But yeah, maybe next time don't don't get the police don't 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 let the don't have the police get involved. Yeah, nobody wants the police involved. Not like uh. this. Oh man. Anyways, it is a crazy time of year for haunt news, though. So many haunts opening, so much going on. Any uh, final thoughts? Anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? No, I think that's just about it. Yeah, it uh. It's it's been a kooky week for yeah. for news, and I gotta say, it was really funny. We set up to do the show notes because we were trying to squeeze it in between hot work and holiday stuff. I'm like, oh, it's gonna take forever to find source. No, no, it did not. No, it, it did not. We both it took like ten minutes, <laughs> and then we were the, the real problem was sorting through it, organizing it, and then finding out what was what. Yeah. Oh man, but yes. Yeah, Halloween Horror Nights did announce its final houses. Oh, what was it? I didn't see that. Oh, let me pull up the link. Oh, well, we need to cover that. Hang on. <laughs> I just thought it was one of the ones that was good. No, uh, I didn't. I, I didn't see it. Um, actually, I'll wait. I do remember. I think I thought we'd already covered that. Maybe I don't know. But they've they've announced their last ones and. Yeah. Oh, that's so, right. They were announcing the non-movie themed ones. The other right, one. Okay, exactly. that's what happened. Okay. Yes. Yes. They've announced the non-movie themed ones. But yeah. I'm really curious how this whole thing with uh, Fright Fest works out, though. Mm -hmm. That's going to be very interesting. Yeah, it will be. I'll be following that one pretty closely. But anyways, thank you very much for spending the past hour with us as we tried to stumble through a podcast in the early morning hours on Monday. Mm -hmm. We greatly appreciate your time and your patience. Um, once again, this is Haunt Weekly. HauntWeekly.com is our homepage. We are Haunt Weekly on Twitter and Facebook. TinyURL.com slash Haunt Weekly takes you to our YouTube channel where you can find all the past episodes, including this one, available for easy listening. And we're also on iTunes, Stitcher, Podomatic, Google Play, wherever finer podcasts are sold. They haven't gotten rid of us yet. Yeah. Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Haunt Weekly, episode number 144. Covering the news for September, for August and September. We will see you guys next time.